Imagine looking at a flower garden through a camera lens. At first sight, you see a variety of flowers, a variety of colors. Not much more than that, right? So you zoom in on a particular grouping of flowers, and now you see the specific features of those flowers, the water accumulation on the petals and on the leaves. However, if you never again zoomed out, if time and time again you were given that focused image, then that limited frame will become your complete understanding of the garden. Likewise, in the top left there, if you never again zoomed in, if time and time again you were given that wide perspective, then that general frame will become your complete understanding of the garden, completely ignoring the unique components within. Thus, the images, the ideas, the ideologies that we consistently encounter control and potentially limit how we see ourselves, how we see others, and how we interact in and with the world. These things control the knowledge we possess, and more importantly, the knowledge we don't possess. Translate that over to black literature. My dissertation focuses on how high school English teachers teach black literature. And I believe it's one of two ways. The first is general, focusing on the shared experiences of us all, adolescents overcoming adversity, not acknowledging the black boys of experience or even the author's race. The second approach is culturally specific, black talk for black texts. Here, the literature becomes so specific that it's inherently different, separate, and potentially forgotten. I suggest taking both approaches and combining them, using those shared experiences as bridges from the text of one group to that of another, and then zoom in once you've crossed that bridge. So we examine community in A Lesson Before Dying, an African-American text, and see how in that text, community places responsibility on the members for the sake of the community and also for the sake of the members themselves. And then we zoom in on the system of injustice against young black males. Zoom back out to community to pan over to Mexican-American text, A House on Mango Street, or European-American text, The Great Gatsby, to see how community is seen there and then zoom in on each group specifics. This ongoing process of zooming in and zooming out creates conversation, not only between the texts, but also within each text, not only between the students, but also within each student, thus giving us the opportunity to expand how we see ourselves, the opportunity to expand how we see each other, and the opportunity to expand how we interact in and with the world. Thank you.